welcome back to VCV Rack. Today we're gonna have some fun with this module right here, Orca's Heart by Scanner Darkly. I built this patch to uh, showcase some things it could do. Ignore the other stuff for now. So, if you just take a look at what it's doing, the most obvious thing first is that it's flipping between what appears to be two scales. So if I turn off all the notes, except just C and G, let's make it go slower too. You can hear those are the only two notes playing, and let's try adding an F. You can hear it incorporated that in there. Let's try turning some other knobs. What do these do? The pattern is shifted. So these algorithm knobs change the way that the module makes decisions about how it generates the sequence. I don't know how it works, but... Um, there's two specific numbers, X and Y, which I kind of think of like coordinates on a map of where you are in this algorithm. It's not really a random sequence generator, it is algorithmic in that you can go back and generate the same thing again. So here are some modulation inputs for Orca's Heart. Let's just take them all out so nothing is getting modulated within it. And the only thing that's happening is uh, some self-patching here with gate number four, which is causing these two quantizers to switch between each other. And let's make the length even shorter. Sorry, there's some noise outside. I don't know if you can hear that. So you can hear it's a very predictable pattern. Let's actually take off the self-patching. So we just have these two notes, plus some octaves. Let's try adding some space. You can see the parameter here on this screen. Now there's some more negative space in the rhythm of this sequence. Now there's a lot. We turn up the speed. Let's make the length longer. more notes back in. And let's add our switching back. Let's, let's find a new pattern. Let's take a moment to talk about these outputs. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm sending all the CV into this matrix mixer, which the input side is this left vertical column here, and the output is this horizontal column at the bottom. And all of these are attenuverter knobs that allow you to change the proportion of uh, the signal that is mixed into this output. So I'm just using it as a way to uh, control and distribute this modulation to different parts of the patch. And the parts of the patch that are getting modulated are this synth voice, which is the Blamsoft XFX wavetable. Like the position of the wavetable is getting modulated in this column right here. So if I turn up 
say this. Even here, it's affecting it a lot more. And you can always trace back where that modulation is coming from by following the cables. It's coming from CV1 of the modulation section of Orca's heart. Let's turn that back down. So, there are two output sections, notes and modulation. Also, let's, let's find a different pattern here. Let's make the speed a bit slower too. Also, I have this sound coming from this REI reverb. This feedback sound. Let's turn that down. So, there are two output sections, modulation and notes. This one is designed for um, triggering notes and going into voltage per octave. So, you can see this purple cable is going into our synth voice. That's where the main notes are coming from. But there are four independent voices that are interrelated, generated by Orca's heart. So if I uh, patch it to this, you can hear it's a different pattern, even though we're in the same algorithmic state. So what you could have here is four separate oscillators doing four different melodic sequences at once that are interrelated. Or you can use that CV to modulate other things as I'm doing in this matrix mixer. The modulation outputs are basically the same except the CV is more fit for modulating parameters, so they're not fit to the voltage per octave standard. But I think the gates are the same as far as I know. Um, they're not identical, so there are actually eight different ones. These are all different. These aren't copies of these as far as I know. We can test that by, say, triggering this. You can see gate 4 and gate 4 aren't the same. So what I have going on here, this is a sample and hold, which takes signal input and then whenever it is triggered with this gate, samples whatever part of the signal that is on when it gets triggered and holds it until it's triggered again. This is useful for taming down the modulation um, and making it more in time with the music. So you can see I have this output from this slow sine LFO coming into the sample and hold and the, the trigger is coming from gate number three. So let's output that to say, the shift of the pattern. So now if we watch the shift, you can see that it is moving whenever gate 3 is triggered. But because we have a sine wave coming in, it is kind of a regular pattern, especially if we made this, this rate um, sync to the clock, for example. We could have um, a shifting pattern that is recurring. Or we could even feed white noise into the sample and hold, or take out the input altogether, which is normal to do so. And then we get a more completely random um, result. But sample and holds are really useful for taking modulation that is changing constantly and um, turning it into modulation that is triggered in time with something like these gates. Put that sine wave back. And let's start modulating this algorithm with the other sample and hold. So this sample and hold is taking modulation actually from this channel, the matrix mixer. And uh, let's, let's have it modulate algorithm X. Let's reset these and start to think about where they're coming from. So let's use CV4, so we have 4B, so you can see now, algorithm X is changing quite a lot. What gate is that coming from? 2. Let's actually make it go um, from gate number 4, which is the same as the CV number. So 
you can see that Orca's Heart has lots to offer in terms of generative patterns and um, allows you to kind of make controlled randomness, which is very useful. This wavetable also has a lot of different waves to choose from, so we can experiment with different types of waves. I only have a single L uh, envelope generator happening, and each stage of the envelope is getting modulated by um, different sources of modulation. It looks like... Um, let's reset them all, actually, and start to explore that. So let's modulate, let's focus on the attack section. So let's modulate the attack using this, this CV right here. We're getting some clipping happening, some distortion, but it sounds good. So if we follow the cables, you can see where all the modulation is coming from. Let's actually modulate it with, um, let's slow this down. Let's modulate it with CV1 of the modulation section, so... the other parts of the envelope. All coming from this section right here. Let's modulate some parameters of this reverb, like the size. actually modulate the length as well of the pattern. It's going to start to sound a bit more irregular when we do that. Oh. There we go. So now you can see the length is changing a lot. We have a lot of space in our pattern still, so let's also modulate that with this same sample and hold. So really, all the modulation is coming from within Orca's Heart, with the exception of this LFO, but just in different amounts and mixing it in different ways, you can really get some interesting results. Really, the hard part isn't getting variation, it's getting stuff that stays the same and um, getting that balance so it doesn't just sound like randomness. Um, that's kind of the, the puzzle of this. So now let's take a look at a patch where I have Orca's Heart actually controlling four different oscillators with their own envelopes and filters and um, there's some other effects going on as well. But let's just take a look at what's going on within Orca's heart. So the scale is getting switched by a division of the clock, which I believe is divided by 16, yep. And um, I only have one voice. Um, you can only hear one voice as of now because of this, the way this mixer is turned down. So let's start to turn up the other voices. So we have the same wavetable oscillator again, with all these parameters getting modulated. And we also have these two tiny tricks 
oscillators, a square, and a saw. We have a noise generator, and we have this smooth oscillator from Volt. We have two envelopes, they're polyphonic, so we're using these merger and splitter modules to um, combine and split that signal up. So between these two envelopes, all eight of these gates are getting changed into envelopes and different parts of that envelope. Well, both the envelopes are getting modulated further by um, these two different LFOs we have going on. The Eric Synth's Black Octosource, which I actually don't completely understand how it works, but that's kind of the beauty of some of these things. And uh, Tides, too. Um, so they're both set very slow, so this kind of just slowly shifts over time. Because these envelopes are going to lots of different things. Let's see if I can even follow it myself. Um, they're going to change the, the panning of each of the channel in the mixer, and also the volume. So they're acting as a amplitude envelopes and panning envelopes. And some of them are even going to the filters as well. So we have um, the Leica ladder filter, which is getting modulated by those same envelopes. The resonance of that filter is also getting modulated by these envelopes coming from these splitters. And so is the Oxid Labs Entferner. Uh, it's a brand new filter from their collection with parameters getting modulated from the same envelopes. And um, the Blamsoft wavetable has a built-in filter, but it's also getting modulated. This time, actually, it looks like it's coming from a an LFO put into an offset. Um, not quite sure why it did that, to be honest. And also, the Basil Smooth Oscillator from Volt doesn't have any filtering at all. So let's start to... I turn up this. I purposefully had it set in this way where it's actually kind of subtle. You might not even realize there's four different synth voices happening because it's a bit sparse. Um, but let's start to bring in some other flavors by bringing up the cutoff on the Leica. You can see the saw is what's getting fed into that. So let's actually... That's coming from CV2 of Orca's Heart. Let's start to bring up the tempo. Because this time I actually have Orca's Heart being clocked by a different clock generator other than the internal clock. That clock is also syncing the delay on the all right devices chrono blob 2 let's also start to turn up the rate of these lfos that are controlling the envelopes and i believe they're also yeah some of the the internal parameters of orca's heart are actually getting modulated by them as well um i think I would actually add sample and holds to these, like I did with the other patch. This one is actually one I made before. And I wasn't really thinking it through as much with this patch. I was just kind of exploring and going in whatever direction I wanted to, which is usually my process. Now you can really start to hear the Oxid Labs filter here. So I basically explained everything that was going on in this patch. This was for recording. Um, I'm not using that now, so ignore it. But I'm going to stop talking and just continue to um, play around with these parameters a little bit and uh, conclude this video. I uh, definitely recommend trying out Orca's Heart. I never mentioned this, but it's uh, an adaptation of an alternative firmware for Monom's White Whale, which Scanner Darkly also made. It was called Orca. I've never used that, but 
I read it's an adaptation for VCV Rack of sorts. Um, and it's a really cool module for making generative, algorithmic, melodic sequences, and rhythmic sequences, and just modulation in general. And I think it's going to become a, a, definitely a stable for me in VCV Rack. If there, if there was a real-life version of this, which I guess there is, um, I'd definitely look into acquiring that. Um, anyway, I'm going to stop talking. Um, thanks for watching. <laughs>